Hi, my name is Anna, and I play oboe with the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra. And I think you are probably here because you have just started to play the oboe, or your band director has asked you to start playing the oboe in your school music program. That's great. It's a really fun instrument. It is also quite challenging. So first thing you have to be aware of is taking care of the reed. The reed is a very fragile part of the instrument. Here's my reed for today. So you will be buying your reeds from the store to start with. And the reeds that you buy from the store are probably going to be soft or medium soft strength. You will want to use those reeds for maybe two weeks. And then you will want to progress to reeds that are a little bit harder. Now, oboe reeds last for between 10 and 20 hours of playing time only. So if you do the math on that, that probably means a reed really will only last about a month. So what I like to do is have more than one reed. So I always have three reeds at a time and I rotate through them. So one day I'll play number one and the next day I'll play number two and then the next day number three. This does a bunch of things. First, it helps your reeds last longer. Second, because reeds are very different, each one plays a little bit differently, you learn to negotiate the challenges of playing on different reeds all of the time. So that is an excellent thing to do. Make sure you always have three reeds. When you buy your reeds, they probably come in a plastic container that's the size of the reed with a plastic top on it. Those are the worst things you can do for your reeds. So what I want you to do is get rid of that almost right away. In fact, I want you to get rid of it right away. And if you, the best bet is to buy a reed case. Now, this is a reed case that holds six reeds. Okay, like that. Um, actually, this one holds more than that. But um, you can find oboe cases that hold just three reeds at the music store, and that's what you should do. Those will keep your reeds playing much, much longer. If you do have those plastic containers, and that's the only thing that you have, those plastic tubes, take something sharp or have your parents take something, something sharp and make a hole in the top cap so that it's not sealed. Because if you're always putting your wet reed into that container and then sealing it up, you're creating an environment where mold can grow quite vigorously and you have the potential to make yourself sick off of your reed. And that's a really terrible thing to do, especially in this time period that we are encountering with the pandemic. So we don't want to have any more problems. So make sure you either poke a hole in those cases or just pick up a three reed case that will make your life a lot easier. So, okay. So like I said, the reed is very fragile. It's strongest when it's totally dry or totally wet, and that's very important to know. So before we start to play on the reed, we must soak the reed in some water. Now you might ask, why don't I soak the reed in my mouth? Well, saliva inside your mouth is actually digestive, and reeds are made out of a grass, technically. It's a scientifically, it's called arundodonax, and it's a kind of grass. And so if you think about it this way, every single time you put your reed in your mouth, it's like eating a salad and your saliva is breaking down the reed. So it won't last as long if you soak it in your mouth. So I get myself a little container of water. I like the ones that screw on like this because they don't leak. Um, and I dip my reed in the water. And usually I just let it lay on my desk for a few minutes. Sometimes people will leave the reed sitting in the water. That's also not great for it if you think about it when it rains a lot, how your yard will get really waterlogged and soaked. The same thing happens to your reed. It's not going to work as effectively if it has too much water, but it also can have too little. And you'll learn how to negotiate that. So just dip your reed and then let it soak, or let it sit, excuse me. Don't let it soak, let it sit and absorb the water for a couple of minutes and then you'll be ready to play it. So I already did that with my reed, so I'm ready to go. So let's talk about how we put the reed in our mouth, because that's really important. So what I want you to do first is take your pinky. Great. You're gonna put the tip of your pinky in the middle of your lower lip, just like this. Now say, ooh. Yep, so get your corners in, ooh. Then open your mouth, say, ah, ah. See how the corners go a little bit back? Ooh, ah. That's how we're going to put the oboe reed in our mouth too. Now remember I said the reed was fragile? 
basically what I'm doing is putting the reed in between my lips like they're pillows. So I'm trying to pillow or cushion around the reed with my lips. I never touch the reed with my teeth. Okay, so now take your reed, hopefully you've soaked it, and you put the tip of the reed in the middle of your lower lip, say ooh, ah, and then notice I just took a big breath because I'm getting ready to play. That's something that we're going to do too. So ooh, ah, So you try that. Great, the next step, ooh, ah. Try to make higher sounds and lower sounds. You can go. I'm just letting the corners of my mouth do that. So that's a great little warm up exercise, and that is absolutely the first thing you should start with whenever you're putting together your oboe, is just make some sounds on the reed. So this is actually in the middle joint of the oboe. And then I have the bell. And those two pieces are going to go together. But before I do that, I need to get this part. This is the cork. It's also a natural material and it can dry out. And you need that to have kind of some lubrication to it. So in your case, you should have cork grease. Looks just like this usually, a little stick. So what you do is you just rub a teeny tiny little amount of cork grease, not very much pressure, just a little bit and then take your fingers and kind of wipe it around the whole cork. You don't need a lot, because it can. if you get too much, it'll get all stuck and kind of gummy in here and it'll catch dirt and that's not good. You just need a little bit. So, but the cork grease is important because we're going to put the two pieces of the instrument together and we need them to slide easily together. If they don't slide easily, we might grab too hard on the keys and then bend the keys. The oboe is actually pretty fragile, so we have to be very careful with it. Now, cork grease has a little bit of oil in it. So yes, your fingers are gonna feel a little bit oily after you've done doing that. Don't wipe it on your clothes. It will stain your clothes. I usually just kind of rub my fingers together until I don't feel it anymore. It's good for your skin, just like it's good for the cork. Okay, so take your bell and take your bottom joint. Now mine has a little piece that sticks up right there. See that? Your oboe probably does not have that. In fact, your oboe probably has a hole on either side, right? Not a big deal. If your oboe has a hole, just make it go on the sides of the instrument. Um, and if you don't do that, it doesn't actually matter. So, but I need to be careful about these two pieces and them not clashing into each other. So I just gently twist until it's together and these two pieces meet in the middle. Great. So now I take the top joint. Okay, this is the next piece. I usually just tuck this under my arm, that's a good way to kind of hold on to your oboe. I don't squeeze at all, um, but that's a good way to hold your oboe when you're dealing with the cork grease in the top joint because you have to do that too. So again, same process, a little bit of cork grease, and then you rub it on, and then you take your fingers. Now, this piece is the same for your oboe and my oboe. You will have a little key that comes down on this side, right there, and there's another key that comes down on this side. If you are looking at the oboe with the keys facing out, the one on the right hand side is the most important. Okay? The one on the left hand side is not as important. However, you don't want to bang them um, on the other, on the middle joint of the oboe and twist them. Now on the middle joint, see there's analogous pieces that stick up. So that's what we're trying to line up. So what I like to do is I hold this on my knee and I push it down until just until those are just meeting and there's still a gap. See that? Then I go from the top and I push straight down. So there's not very much twisting. And if I'm going to take it apart, I gently, 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 gently twist the same exact way. You notice I don't do like huge motions. We're talking little teeny tiny motions here. So again, I gently, 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 little teeny tiny twists. I line them up, I push straight down, and then that one that's on the right hand side, if the keys are facing out, this, this is my right hand side, um, that's the side that's most important to be 
perfectly lined up. This side doesn't matter as much, okay? This side, very, very important. If you don't have this exactly lined up, you might not have some of your notes come out of the oboe. So if some of your notes are not coming out, check this first to make sure that's totally lined up. Great, then you take your reed. Now, you might want to use a little cork grease on your reed too. I use even less cork grease on my reed than I do on the middle and the bottom joints of the, or the top joints and the middle joints of the oboe because the reed is going in this tiny little hole right here. We call this the reed well. And if you get too much cork grease to build up in there, um, your oboe will stop playing. So I use just a minuscule amount of cork grease on my reed to put it in. So the reed is flat, right? It's shaped like a football, so there's a flat side um, for each of your lips. And so you just wanna line up the flat side with the keys to the best of your ability. You might, wanna, it, you might adjust it once you get it in. So I choose how I want it to look. I kind of look down the keys and then I push straight down. You wanna push it all the way in until it stops. Your band director possibly will tell you to pull your reed out a little bit, perhaps if you are sharp. Sorry to say this is a mistake. Okay, you cannot change being sharp or flat on the oboe by pushing in the reed or pulling out the reed. In fact, you're going to create problems for yourself. So when that happens, um, I usually just humor my band director and pretend because I, if I pull it out, literally then there's a gap between the reed and the top of the oboe on the inside and you're going to get really weird things that happen with the sound that are not good and they won't be any happier. Um, if you are having trouble with being really out of tune, try a different read. That's your best option. Okay, so now that the oboe is in your hand, your left hand goes on the top, and then down here there's a thumb rest for your thumb to sit just underneath. And you'll see three buttons here, one, two, three, and three buttons here. That's where our fingers eventually will go. But for right now, I just want you to have just your first finger on your left hand on the top button right there. Now make sure you're nice and tall with your hand because you don't want to hit the side of your hand on that and you don't want to hit the side of your right hand on this key down here. So really tall fingers right on the fingertips on those buttons, okay? We're going to do exactly the same process that we did when we played the reed just by itself. So tip of the read into the middle of the lower lip. Say, ooh, ah. Great, that's how you make the first sound on the oboe. Now, the very first practice session, you should practice three notes. So what I just played for you was B, and the next, when you add your next finger, it's A, and your next finger down is G. Now, you might remember these three notes from recorder from third grade, you're right, they're exactly the same fingerings and exactly the same notes. So try those on the oboe. And then think of how many tunes you know that have three notes. So Mary Had a Little Lamb, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, lots of tunes have three notes to them and you can practice them. So there you go, that's how you start playing the oboe. Now when you go to put it um, away when you're done, couple of really important things. The reed is the most important thing to take care of first. So I gently rock back and forth like this. I don't twist. If you twist, you might break the cork on the reed and that's bad. So instead I rock back and forth while gently pulling up with my fingers. And then I put the reed in my reed case before I do anything else so that it is well protected and doesn't have the possibility of getting banged on something and broken. Okay, so put your reed in your reed case. Then you should have in your um, kit a swab. Now some of you will have two different swabs, a teeny tiny one and a bigger one for the bottom joint. Um, I just have one swab. <clears throat> so what you wanna do is tip the elbow over, take the heavy part of the swab, drop it through the bell, and then grab it at the other end. Now, you're gonna see, I'm not gonna pull all the way through. I'm just gonna pull, oh, this is black. You can't tell my black sweater. There we go. I'm just gonna pull to there. 
and then I'm going to pull it back out. Because it's very easy to get a swab stuck in an oboe, I don't like to pull it all the way through. So that is usually what I do. If you have the two different sized swabs, you should use the bigger one on the middle joint and you should use the littler one on the top joint and be very careful in, with that little one in the top joint to not let it roll up or get stuck. If your swab gets stuck in your oboe, please go to your music shop to have them take it out. Do not let mom or dad try to use a clothes hanger to get it out. You can damage the inside of the instrument very badly that way. So make sure you take it to the oboe shop. Don't try to ask mom and dad for help with this one. They will not be able to help you with it. So why do we swab? Well, we have breath and breath has moisture in it and we're blowing breath through the oboe and so there's condensation that happens inside the instrument. And if you do not swab, that condensation stays in the instrument and it ruins the pads and it grows mold. It's a recurring theme with the mold. So unless you want to breathe in moldy air, you should swab every time. And nobody wants to breathe in moldy air. It's terrible for you. You can get sick. So make sure you swab after you were done practicing every single time. Even in band rehearsal when they don't give you quite enough time, end just a little bit early to make sure you can swab your oboe before you're done. Great. Other than that, I'm going to say congratulations. It's a great instrument and lots of fun to play.